to the next lecture analysis and design of basic bjt monostable multi vibrator so again here is the disclaimer monostable multi vibrator it is also called as one shot single shot single step single swing single cycle multi vibrator or uni vibrator it has only one stable state and the other state is called quasi stable state under normal conditions the circuit remains in its stable state when an external trigger pulse is applied the circuit is driven into quasi stable state it remains in quasi stable state for a time depending on circuit constants after this time the circuit returns to its stable state and remains in this state till the next trigger pulse is applied thus it gives a single output pulse of desired duration for every input trigger pulse it has one energy storing element the figure shows the collector coupled monostable multi vibrator circuit it uses 2 np transistor this circuit is also referred to as base coupled monostable multi vibrator or one shot multi vibrator as uh, what we have discussed this monostable multi vibrator has just one stable state and when we apply an external trigger pulse the circuit changes its state from stable to quasi stable state and then automatically after some time interval t the circuit returns back to the original normal state the time t is dependent on the circuit component r and c so here these are two element r and here this is c so the time period t depends upon the circuit component r and c so now let us try to understand the construction the q1 and q2 the q1 and here the q2 are identical npn transistors the two collector resistances are equal to rc the output of q2 that is the collector of q2 is coupled to the base of q1 through a resistance r1 which is shunted by a small capacitor c1 the capacitor c1 is a speed up capacitor required to make the transition fast and to reduce the transition time the collector of q1 is coupled to the base of q2 through a capacitor c thus a dc coupling in bistable multi vibrator is replaced by a capacitive coupling in monostable multi vibrator the resistance r at the input of q2 is returned to the supply voltage vcc the value of r2 and minus vbb so you can check out here the r2 is connected to the base of transistor q1 and the other end is connected to minus vbb the value of r2 and minus vbb are chosen such that the transistor q1 is off so why this transistor q1 is off because we are applying a negative voltage to npn transistor so negative voltage goes to the p terminal hence the transistor q1 is off the transistor q2 is on that is in saturation this is possible by forward biasing q2 with the help of vcc and resistance r so you can check out here this is the path vcc r which is connected to the base of transistor q2 making it on thus the transistor q2 is on and q1 is off is the normal stable state of the circuit the positive triggering pulse is to be applied to the base of q1 through capacitor c2 this is what is being shown in the circuit diagram so this is all about the construction now we will try to understand the operation so here we have listed it out when a positive trigger of sufficient magnitude and duration is applied to the base of q1 the transistor q1 starts conducting due to this the voltage at its collector vc1 so vc1 is the voltage at this point collector terminal c1 decreases this is coupled to the base of q2 that is the transistor 2 through a capacitor c so you can make out here this voltage is applied to the base of transistor q2 via this capacitor c 
but the voltage across capacitor cannot change instantaneously as you as you all know that the capacitor takes certain amount of time to respond to a given change in the input signal so this the voltage across the capacitor cannot change instantaneously hence the decrease in vc1 that is the voltage at the collector terminal of transistor q1 directly causes a decrease in the base voltage of q2 that is vb2 it has been marked here the voltage at this terminal with respect to ground next the drop in voltage is about i1 rc now i1 is the current passing through the resistor rc1 so it has been shown here so the voltage drop will be i1 into rc1 now this decreases the forward bias of q2 and hence collector current i2 decreases thus the collector voltage of q2 increases which is applied to the base of transistor q1 through r1 this further increases the base potential of q1 and q1 is quickly driven into saturation and at the same time the transistor q2 gets driven into cutoff now this is the quasi stable state of the circuit in the quasi stable state the q2 is driven to off condition and q1 is in saturation that is on condition so this is the quasi stable state now as we have discussed there are two state stable states and the quasi stable state now this quasi stable state is a temporary state and the circuit will remain in this state depending upon the value of the r and c which has been connected to the transistor q2 in the stable state q1 is off and q2 is on so the circuit will remain in this quasi stable state for only a finite time t in the quasi stable state the capacitor c starts charging through the path vcc r and on transistor q1 as it starts charging towards vcc the base of q2 experiences a rise in voltage and when this voltage becomes more than the cut in voltage of q2 so this voltage when it becomes more then the cut in voltage of q2 then q2 starts conducting and due to the regenerative action q1 is turned off so thus the circuit returns back to its stable state now which is the stable state the stable state is the one wherein the transistor q1 is off and q2 is on the circuit remains in the stable state till the next triggering pulse occurs now we can write the duration for which it remains on t equals to 0.693 into rc now this r and c corresponds to the resistance and the capacitors which are connected to the base of transistor q2 now in the next slide we are going to derive this equation the pulse width of collector coupled monostable multi vibrator so the pulse width is the time for which the circuit remains in the quasi stable state it is also called as gate width and is denoted as capital t initially q2 is in saturation and hence vb2 equals to this equation vb e2 in saturation given as v sigma so this is the saturation voltage which is typically 0.8 volts for silicon transistor so here we can write this voltage is typically 0.2 volts for silicon make transistor when the pulse is applied at t equals to 0 plus the capacitor voltage cannot change instantaneously we find that the capacitor voltage cannot change instantaneously so the voltage vb2 decreases by a factor i1 into rc the capacitor charges exponentially hence vb2 also increases exponentially whose final value at t equals to infinity so at t equals to infinity it can go up to maximum value of vcc but when vb2 becomes equal to v gamma here this point then q2 starts conducting and the circuit comes back to the stable state this is a t time duration at which the transition occurs 
to write the equation for exponential charging of capacitor so let us write this equation so have a look at this equations vb2 is the voltage at the base of transistor q2 if it is on then we say it is saturation so the v sigma for silicon transistor it is 0.8 volts and for germanium it is 0.3 volts so at t equals to 0 plus at this position vi will be equal to v sigma minus i1 into rc and the final voltage so vi is the initial voltage vf is the final voltage so it can go up to a value of vcc that has been highlighted here so vc will be equal to vf minus the voltage vf minus vi e raised to minus t upon rc so it's a time constant so if we substitute we get this value this equation 1 mark this as equation 2 at t equals to t the base voltage of transistor 2 is v gamma so substituting the value of 2 in equation 1 what we get is the equation for time period t tau is the time constant natural log of this expression in bracket so the point to note here is if it is germanium this value is 0.3 volts and if it is silicon it is 0.8 volts next when q1 is in saturation under quasi stable state we can write so you can check out vc1 is the voltage across the collector terminal of transistor q1 it is vc is set the voltage drop i1 rc will be vcc minus this voltage vc is set we get the expression for time period t at room temperature we have this expression vc set plus vb set is approximately equal to twice the value of v gamma and then substituting this in equation 5 we get this expression time period t equals to tau into natural log of 2 now the time constant tau for the charging path of capacitor c is rc so tau is basically a product of r into c so if we substitute this in this expression what we get is i right here t equals to 0 0.693 into rc so the time period is governed by the component values r and c so it is dependent on temperature as the vb is set vc is set and v gamma depend on the temperature so the gate width t decreases as the temperature increases so larger the value of vcc smaller is this effect uh, one remedy for this temperature effect is to connect the resistor r not to the vcc but to another source v whose value decreases as the temperature decreases thus compensating the effect of temperature now let us start with the numericals first problem a monostable multivibrator is used as a voltage to time converter find the time period if r equals to 10 kilo ohms c equals to 0 0.01 microfarad and a ratio of vbb to vcc is 0 0.5 so first we just write down the given data and then we we'll start with the solution so the necessary expression is t equals to rc natural log of 1 plus vcc by vbb let us substitute the component values r is 10k so 10 into 10 to the power 3 capacitor is 0 0.01 microfarad so 0 0.01 into 10 to the power minus 6 natural log of 1 plus 1 upon this uh, ratio is 0 0.5 so if you solve this the time period is 0 0.11 milliseconds and what we have asked is find the time period s and we can also calculate the frequency the frequency is f equals to 1 by t so 1 upon 0 0.11 milli so 10 to the power minus 3 so the frequency in this case is 9.09 .09 kilohertz so that's the end of the first problem next problem 
calculate the component values of monostable multivibrator to produce output pulse of 140 140 microseconds duration assume HFA minimum equals to 20 IC set that is a collector current saturation value of 6 milliamperes VCC equals to 6 volt VBB is minus 1.5 volt this VBB as we have discussed is required to reverse bias the transistor Q1 driving it into cutoff and here are the assumptions so let us start solving this so first you need to write down the given data then the solution at stable state let me write here at stable state transistor Q2 is on and Q1 is off so with this in mind we can write RC2 equals to RC1 typically the res collector resistors for both the transistors Q1 and Q2 are to be identical meaning of same value so RC1 equals to RC2 equals to so you can write the expression VCC minus VCE set divided by IC set so if I substitute the values 6 0 0.3 and IC set given as 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 milliamperes so the value is 950 ohms so you can write the standard value alongside it now let us calculate the value of IB2 set let us write the expression for IB2 set which equals to IC set divided by HFE minimum as you all know that uh, the relation between IC and IB is that IC equals to HFE times IB2 now to make the transistor on we have to have typical value of IB2 minimum value of IB2 and that is governed by HFE minimum so to make the transistor on we have to have this minimum value to be satisfied so let us substitute IC saturation is again 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 20 so it is 0 0.3 milliamperes which is given in the problem statement also IB1 set is 0 0.3 milliamperes so we have cross verified this value now with this information we can calculate the value of R so R equals to VCC minus VB set divided by IB2 set so when we are solving these problems always uh, advisable to draw the circuit diagram somewhere here so you can you know make out or visualize what are these component values for so let us substitute the values 6 0 0.7 volts and IB2 is uh, how much 0.3 milliamperes so 0.3 into 10 to the power minus 3 so the answer is if you solve this it is 17.67 kilo ohms now this is a stable state in case of stable state Q2 is on and Q1 is off now at quasi stable state second part at quasi stable state and by now you know what is the quasi stable state it is the state wherein the transistor Q1 is on and transistor Q2 is off we also derived the expression for time period T which equals to 
जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स नाइन्टी थ्री इंटू आर सी सो सी इक्वल्स टू टी अपॉन दिस वैल्यू एंड इन द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट इट इज गिवन एज द आउटपुट पल्स ऑफ वन फोर्टी माइक्रोसेकेंड्स ड्यूरेशन सो वी सब्सिट्यूट दैट वैल्यू हियर वन फोर्टी माइक्रोसेकेंड्स सो इट इज टेन टू द पावर माइनस सिक्स एंड देन जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स नाइन्टी थ्री इंटू द वैल्यू ऑफ आर वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड एज वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड इट एज सेवेंटीन पॉइंट सिक्सटी सेवन किलो ओम सो लेट इज राइट हियर सेवेंटीन पॉइंट सिक्सटी सेवन किलो दैट इज टेन टू द पावर थ्री हियर सो इफ आई सॉल्व दिस वॉट आई गेट इज वैल्यू ऑफ कैपेसिटर इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वैल्यू ऑफ कैपेसिटर इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन वन फोर माइक्रो फेर नाउ द इम्पोर्टेंट स्टेप इज अज्यूम आई बी वन सेचुरेशन इक्वल्स टू आई आर टू नाउ वी कैन राइट आई आर वन इक्वल्स टू आई बी वन सेट प्लस आई आर टू सो दिस इज और जीरो पॉइंट थ्री मिलियन पियर्स आई आर टू इज अगेन जीरो पॉइंट थ्री मिलियन पियर्स सो दिस वैल्यू इज जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स मिली एम पियर्स सो वी कैन राइट द एक्सप्रेशन वी सी सी इक्वल्स टू वी बी सेट सो द ट्रांजिस्टर इज ऑन प्लस द करंट पासिंग थ्रू द सर्किट इज आई आर आई आर वन इन टू आर सी टू प्लस आर वन सो सब्सिट्यूट जीरो पॉइंट सेवन प्लस जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स इंटू टेन टू द पावर माइनस थ्री एंड आर सी एंड आर सी टू वी हैव ऑलरेडी कैलकुलेटेड इट एज नाइन फिफ्टी ओम्स द फर्स्ट स्टेप नाइन फिफ्टी प्लस आर वन सो इफ यू सिंप्लीफाई दिस द वैल्यू ऑफ R1 is 17.88 kilo ohms now next we have to calculate the value of R2 so we can write R2 equals to vb set minus of minus vbb divided by ir2 so you substitute the values it is a uh, 0.7 plus a uh, minus minus plus a uh, 1.5 volts is applied and ir2 is 0.3 milliamps so 0.3 into 10 to the power minus 3 and this value is 7.33 किलो ओम्स नाउ वी ऑल्सो डिस्कस दैट वी कनेक्ट अ कैपेसिटर सी वन रिफर टू दैट सर्किट डायग्राम दिस कैपेसिटर सी वन इज ऑल्सो रिफर टू एज स्पीड अप कैपेसिटर एंड इट इज चोजन सच दैट द आर वन सी वन इज टिपिकली वन माइक्रो सेकेंड सो वी कैन राइट एक्सप्रेशन आर वन सी वन इज वन माइक्रो सेकेंड so c1 will be equal to 10 to the power minus 6 divided by r1 and the value of r1 what we got is 17 uh just make a note here the value of r1 is not 17 uh, it is 7.883 kilo ohms Uh, just go to back slide. So here I have just made a small mistake. Uh, this value of R one is seven point eight eight, not a seventeen. So I'll just make a zero here. So it is seven point eight eight kilo ohms. Students kindly make a change here in this problem uh, while solving. So it is the value of C one is ten to the power minus six divided by the value of R one that is seven point eight eight kilo ohms, and the answer is. 
126.9 pico farad so with that we have come to an end of this problem so let us talk about the advantages so the advantages of monostable multi vibrator are as follows one trigger pulse is enough if you refer to a stable multi vibrator in that circuit you don't require any trigger pulses to change the states and depending upon the value of r and c it will toggle it will switch now in case of bi stable multi vibrator you do require two separate trigger pulses to change the state because uh, in that case both the states are stable states the circuit design is simple and it is inexpensive then the disadvantage is the application of trigger pulse t that is the time duration has to be greater than the rc time constant of the circuit and uh, there are many applications i just listed out uh, television circuits and control system circuits these are some of the practice uh, questions for you all review questions this question which is highlighted in yellow color was asked in uh, may june 2018 goa university question paper for 10 marks so with the help of suitable circuit and waveforms illustrate the operation of a monostable multi vibrator so when such type of question is asked you have to start with the definition then draw the circuit diagram label circuit diagram with, with all the component or symbols and the notations and then you write about the construction working uh, working for both the states uh, when q1 is off and q2 is on and for the next state q2 is on and q1 is off and then you draw the waveform across the base and the collector terminal and then the operation yes okay with that we have come to an end of uh, this uh, lecture tutorial on detective monostable multi vibrator thank you